collections at the REACH Gallery Museum. And I want to welcome you to the REACH's Facebook Live event, Caring for Family Treasures. And it's one of our REACH at Home programs. So you can find lots of other generalist and educational programs on, uh, on our site, www.thereach.ca slash at home. So I want to talk today about clothing and textiles. Uh, I think we were scheduled for photos and documents, but somehow that's not what I had in my mind. So I'm set for clothing and textiles. Um, but I think you'll enjoy it anyway. Um, so textiles include obviously clothing, but it includes things like draperies, uh, carpets, upholstery, and linens. Um, um, organic textiles in particular are really, really susceptible to environmental damage. So that's the climates in our houses. So we talked a little bit about this uh, last time that our homes have climate. So if you have a forest air furnace, you kind of have a, a hot desert zone up in your attic and you have a sort of a cooler, damper zone in your basement. And then there's usually the main floor, the couple of main floors um, that are optimal for, for um, anything. They feel good to you, they feel good to organic uh, materials. Um, they're also really susceptible to indoor air pollution. So those are things like smokers, if you have a smoker in your house, um, cooking fumes, so a lot of us like onions and garlic in our food, um, cook broccoli or Brussels sprouts or anything like that. All of those are very sulfurous and they put a lot of um, uh, gases into our environments that smell strongly. So those are all also carrying uh, contaminants with them uh, that can impact clothing. The other thing is that organic materials are also very susceptible to light. So when we're talking about draperies, for example, if you have um, an organic drapery, a nice, you know, dupioni silk or something, then what you have on the window side of that is a sacrificial liner that will absorb the UV from the outside, but provide a buffer against that organic material and protect it to, a, to an extent. The other thing that organic textiles are very, very susceptible to is pests. So this is the time of year we're going to start seeing these guys. Uh, they come in in one form, but it's often another kind of a form that's a little bit more hidden that's very dangerous. So uh, this is my visual aid section. So this is a clothes moth. You might see this guy uh, fluttering around in your house and you can tell a damaging moth from um, an, an innocuous non-threatening moth because the good ones will fly toward the light, you know, the moth toward the light. These guys are looking for a dark corner where they can get in there and eat your nice sweater. And they will do that. They will get into your garments and probably some, most people have some experience with this, is that you'll pull a beautiful sweater out of the closet and there might be a couple of little casings on it, but there are holes throughout or maybe even a large hole throughout. So these guys get in there, they lay their eggs, their eggs hatch, and they can create little tiny uh, caterpillars that feed on your fibers. So what you might also see, and this is yucky, is the eggs and the casing. So if you open a closet and you pull your uh, hangers apart and you see this, this is very bad. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what to do about this, but we want to be watching for it and hopefully preventing it. And we'll certainly talk about that too. The other insect that you might see this time of year is this guy. So this is a, a carpet beetle, certainly not this size. These guys are actually only about two millimeters, maybe three millimeters long. They're really small and they're mottly and brown. And quite often you'll see them on your windowsill. And most of us have them. Um, they're really little, they can get in quite easily. Um, and this is not like the clothes moth. This is not the guy that does the damage, but the same thing is happening. These guys come in, they mate, they get, well, they get out and they mate, they come back in and they find a dark corner where they can lay their eggs. And then you get these. And this guy, the six inch woolly bear, no, they're also about two or three millimeters. They're really little. And this little woolly bear phase is, is what's eating, doing the damage. And these guys, because they're really tiny, can get in really tight spaces and do quite a lot of damage without you noticing them. So if you see carpet beetles on your windowsills, 
it's worth uh, your time to go around and have a look at the items in your closet, um, maybe things in your linen closets, and double check to see if there's any insect damage. So if you do find insect damage or insect, you know, ha habitation in your stuff, don't, don't panic. Don't panic. What we want to do is we want to freeze them out. So get a garbage bag or a big Ziploc bag, put whatever it is in that and put it in a, a deep freezer and you leave it there for about three days. That kills the pest. There's like, they're dead. That's not a problem. And then you pull the, the garment out, the textile out and you clean it, you vacuum it and you get rid of all of the casings or the eggs or whatever you found, you get rid of that and then you clean it. But once you've done the cleaning or the vacuuming, definitely take your vacuum bag out to the garbage or dump the contents of your Dyson or whatever you do and get it out of your house. Just get them always out. Um, if, um, if you've got mildew, which is another product, a problem for, for textiles, um, again, the freezing helps very gently vacuuming them. And if you are doing that, please, and we all have them now, wear a mask um, because mold is very uh, unhealthy and you don't want that circulating. So, and then you can have it dry cleaned. And if it's if it's a kind of a, a product that you can hand wash, do so. Um, but the cleaning, and there may be staining from the mildew and it's very probable that you won't get that out. Um, when you're cleaning, textiles you don't want to vigorously be rubbing them because that's that's physical damage now too right you're abrading them um and let's talk a bit about storage because the problem can be that maybe these things are not being stored properly um if you've got your beautiful grandmother's wool coat and it's in a hall closet or your closet it's maybe not as protected as it might be and so for these these invaders you want um you want to provide physical barriers to them. So you can get a good quality zippered clothing bag, not a plastic bag. Please, please don't store your good textiles in the dry cleaning bag. Uh, most of those are really inexpensive. They're made from a kind of plastic that off gases and they will cause more problems than they solve. So don't use those. Um, and you can actually make a fairly good garment bag out of an old sheet. Um, and you can create them out of, um, you know, unbleached cotton, anything like that. And they're really simple. So I have my where I had the giant killer bugs. Now I have my little mini kind of a pattern for a, for a, a clothing thing. And so it's a three fold. You fold it together and then you seam. You cut it so it matches the contours of the hanger you're going to use. You seam it at the top. You seam it along the bottom and you can just even a basting stitch will do for this. And then you can just put a couple of ties where these ink things come together. You can slide it in, leave a little hole at the top for the hanger and then a couple of ties. And that's a good barrier. That's a great barrier for insects. It's a great barrier against household contaminants and it will really protect your garments pretty well. Um, and when you're storing them, do store them on the level of your home where you're comfortable. Um, if it's not something um, that you can put on a hanger, then maybe you want to consider rolled storage. So I've got some examples about that too. So rolled storage is just a tube. And these are, um, we get paper on these, rolled paper on these. I get them from a printer's. You can get long, long, long versions if you're thinking of doing it for a carpet. And you can get those from carpet stores. Quite often they'll give them to you. And what you do is you cover them with acid-free tissue, ideally, because the cardboard's not all that great either. And then you can roll stuff around them. So I might use something that's this size, maybe, for you know uh, vintage scarves or table runners, um, that kind of thing. If you've got a beautiful quilt or a carpet, you might want one of the big uh, carpet store ones. But these prevent creases and textiles that are stored especially if they're stacked, will really crimp in those creases. And those are where the damage is going to happen. And I think, you know, you've probably seen that. You pulled a, something out that's been in storage for a while. Maybe it's a bit discolored along that crease um, where, where, um, uh, where it was exposed. And maybe that's where it's, the fabric is broken. So you have to be really careful about that. 
Um, if you're going to fold something, you know, for sheets, for example, um, or big tablecloths, you can get the same tissue and instead of pressing those cre cre creases very tightly, you could pad them out with a little bit of tissue. So just a couple layers of tissue along those creases and that'll keep those from really setting in and becoming harmful to, to the garment, to the piece. Um, anything you store, any textile you store, please clean it first. Um, it had the worst possible experience with this. We got a collection of really, um, really interesting uh, mid-century garments, kind of the house dress kind of thing, and they had not been cleaned when they were put away. So consequently, when we got them, they no longer had armpits. <laughs> The textile was completely gone from that. So, and the stockings, uh, really nice old stocky handmaids, handmade stockings from the turn of the century. Again, they didn't clean them very well, and most of the foot was gone. So, clean them and then store them. Um, if you're putting uh, your linens in a hall closet, what you have to be concerned about is, is it going onto bare wood? Any kind of storing on bare wood because wood will actually transfer its color to those textiles. So you can either paint them or seal them with varathane or something like that. Make sure it's really dry, let it air out, and then you can use it for storage. Or you can use some kind of a paper sh shelf liner that will protect the textile from, from the wood. So you have to be a little bit conscious about that. Um, when you're hanging garments, um, it's advisable to use a padded hanger. Um, special vintage garments, particularly heavy garments, uh, it's good to use a padded hanger. And so padded hangers are easy. There's lots of um, how-tos on Pinterest. I had a look. But you want to start with a good finished wooden hanger. So these triangle hangers are good for heavy objects because they're reinforced, right? There's this extra piece here and, and these won't pull apart. Um, but you can also use the single ones without the bar for lighter things. And it's really just a matter of getting some good um, polyester batting and wrapping this and then covering that, either tying it in place with some cotton uh, bias tape, so something like this, something like this, um, or actually taking another piece of unbleached cotton and sewing that over the top, which is what we do. But there's lots of information about that on, on Pinterest for you to find out. But that will help um, support the fabric along where it's hanging. Have you ever taken uh, an old piece or a co cotton silk, do this particularly badly, um, out of the closet on a wire hanger and there's tears along the shoulder? That's because it was too sharp, uh, too sharp an angle for them. It's a, it's, and metal hangers are just not good anyway, so don't use those. Um, but not good for hanging things on. Um, so carpets, I have another sad story about carpets. If you're storing a nice area rug, particularly the, the you know expensive wool ones or silk ones, um, do the roll, rolled storage. And when you store them, not only wrap the tube in tissue, and then you wrap whatever it is around it, then you roll that in a nice clean sheet. And when I say a clean sheet, if you can smell bleach on a sheet, if you've got old white sheets and you can smell bleach, wash them till you can't because that chlorine is still gonna impact the fabric or buy new cotton or new sheets, new cheap sheets, whatever you like. But anyway, roll them and wrap them well in a couple of wraps and then turn it into a giant bonbon. Bon. And on the ends, on the ends, tweak them together and then tie that, tie that with the cotton tying tape or string or jute or whatever. And then at sort of about, depending on how long it is, uh, one quarter, one half, three quarters, that kind of thing. Do another loop of that around to hold it and that's the physical barrier that will keep the carpet beetles and and the and the clothes moss out of there um i had a friend who had some really nice carpets in storage and when she went to get them um they had substantial uh insect damage so you can pay a conservator to reweave that wool with new wool but it's expensive so it's just better to to um to take good care of them uh vacuuming vacuuming textiles um so if you're putting away a, um something and you want to vacuum it it's, it's gotten dusty or something um we always recommend that you do that through a screen so this is just a piece of screen door screen and it's wrapped with some kind of tape just so that the little pokey edges aren't out and if you're vacuuming something that has um, um any kind of beading 
or embroidery or that kind of thing, put this down on the fabric, on the, on, on the, on the garment, and vacuum through that. And that'll get all the dust and any dirt and pet hair and things like that, but it won't pull on, on the embellishments and pull them off. So that's a good way to do that. And this is my tiny sample one. You can make these as big as you want, as big as you need. Um, or you could just move them around, whatever. Um, so for um, elaborate garments, we're going a little over here, but for elaborate garments, uh, a wedding dress, say, or a beautiful wedding linga that are very em embellished, hanging is not the best thing for those. So for those, you probably want to, after you have them cleaned, put them in some kind of an acid-free box. And some of the cleaners will provide that. They will clean them and they will send them back to you packed in tissue in an acid-free box. And what they are, sample again, is kind of a bigger version of a Hollinger box like these. These are acid-free, so there's nothing that's gonna act on the garment. They're really strong. They've got the reinforced corners. Um, so they're a good, good, um, product to store things in. And we store lots of things in various sizes of Hollinger boxes. Um, so because of the weight of the embellishment, the garment just cannot take uh, the weight of being hung. So if you're hanging um, some, your wedding linga from a waistband, it's gonna pull that waistband right off, the weight of it to do that. So it's better to lie it down and, and put it in a box. Um, which brings me to the last kind of point I wanna talk about, which is people that own beautiful uh, decorative carpets or like to display quilts. Um, the weight of these can really pull if you don't hang them properly. So if it's a, a quilt or a carpet like that that has some some weight to it, what you can do is you can either sew a sleeve of unbleached cotton, just baste it onto the top side. So a sleeve, make two, make a tube out of unbleached cotton as long as it needs to be. And then sew the front, the top and the back of that, just baste it on, not obviously through the whole thing, but just onto the backing where there's good support. And then put a dowel through that and hang the dowel. Or even better than that, you get a, a bar and you cover that with the one side of a hook and loop kind of a branding Velcro. And then you baste the other side. Don't use the sticky stuff. Get the stuff that you have to sort of sew on. Put that on the other side. And that will support the whole top end, whole top of the carpet. And that will distribute the hanging weight better. Um, so I had a friend that did this with her, not the same carpet, um, clothes moth person, but another friend that hung it up using little tacks. So what the weight did was it made big holes in the carpet because of the weight not being distributed well. So that's my very quick how to take care of your textiles. But as I do say, you know, I'm always here to help. If you've got a question, I want you to, to, to contact me because that's part of what I do. Uh, you know, preserving history is important to me. Yours is important to me. So you can email me at capolds at the reach .ca. Uh, Give me a phone number and I can call you and we can have a chat. And tell me what your question is, and I'd be happy to get back to you. And I just want to remind you that this is part of the Reach at Home series, and there's lots of great stuff, educates for kids, uh, engaging um, uh, videos about our, about our art installations, as well as my library of Caring for Family Heirlooms. So next Friday at 1030, we'll be back on track with photos and documents. I'm sorry if you tuned in specifically to see that today. I'm really sorry. Um, but thank you for joining me today. And again, if you have any questions, let me know. And I just hope to be able to see all of you in person again pretty soon. So stay home, stay safe, stay well. Thanks. Bye.